one of the things I've been very passionate about for years is lighting. And a really big trend in lighting is going to be bioadaptive lighting. And as humans, we've really only been inside for a very short amount of time of our, of our evolution. We're used to being outside. And outside, from the time you get up in the morning till the time you, the sun sets in the evening, the colour temperature of the light is constantly changing. And that resets our body clock, which is called our, our circadian rhythm, our natural body rhythm. All of a sudden, we're trapped in buildings with lots and lots of artificial light. And I don't know if you've ever been in a training environment for a day where at the end of the day you've been really, really, really sleepy. And that's a lot to do with the fact that your circadian rhythm, your body clock has been reset by just the having that single colour temperature of light, which is very, very artificial. It's really not good for us. So a load of new technologies are coming together to create um, an overall thing called bioadaptive lighting, sometimes called human-centered lighting, where the colour temperature of light fittings in a space can be varied throughout the day to try and match the sun. But that has a lot of challenges inbuilt with it. Uh, firstly, we've got to vary the colour temperature. The way that's going to happen is light fittings are going to need an RGB lighting array. So mixing red, green and blue, you'll be able to create whatever colour of white you want. But that's also got to be done with a really good colour rendering index. And on an LED box, you'll see a number for CRI. Anything above 90 is really good. And color rendering index is the ability of a light to render a color accurately. If the CRI is bad, a color that looks really bright and vibrant outside, you take it indoors and it, it's sort of dull and, and, and lifeless. And we've also got to do that at lots of different luminances. So you've got the dimmer knob, you've got good colour rendering index, and you've got a change in colour temperature throughout the day. And this is really challenging. One of the practical ways this is going to happen is Cisco. Their aim in life is to sell lots of ports. They already sell lots of ports for networking. What they also want to do is sell lots of ports to connect lighting. So power over Ethernet lighting is going to be a big, big deal, initially driven by the commercial space. There's been quite a few studies done on bioadaptive lighting, lots done in Scandinavia, and what they found is if you put bioadaptive lighting in in schools, the performance of kids goes up. If you put it in hospitals, people get better quicker. If you put it in homes, people are going to feel fresher, they're going to feel more alive, they can be lively when they want to, they can be sleepy at night. So power over Ethernet is going to be one of the technology drivers to, to make this happen. We're already seeing the beginnings of it with things like Philips Hue and LifeX bulbs, but I don't know about you, I kind of wouldn't want to my clients install these things and then have to have them update the firmware of every light bulb in the house. That's just not tenable. It's not, it's not a serious professional product yet, but very soon we're going to have the beginnings of some serious professional products to enable us to do bioadaptive lighting. And the great thing is for our industry is we are absolutely the industry with the skills to make that happen. So look at it, investigate it. There's going to be a CDA white paper out next month that I've written to discuss it. But it's definitely a technology to pay attention to.